Modern eGPUs like this one are an effective way to add graphic performance to underpowered systems. But I've been trying all day and I just can't get this Thunderbolt cable to connect to this 1989 Max SCSI port. Just do anything? But there actually was a SCSI based eGPU released in 1992. It's super weird and I just so happen to have one. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy weird, improbable tech from the dawn of personal computing, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. The Supermac Superview is a super weird piece of tech. It is quite literally an external GPU that operates over a SCSI connection. And it operates exactly as you'd expect, like a modern eGPU. It gives you an extended desktop when it's connected with a range of resolutions, often much higher than your Mac's built-in video. But this thing is just so ahead of its time, it's almost anachronistic. Like somebody peered into the future, saw that we'd have eGPUs, and tried to make one with early 90s technology. Now, I couldn't find much information about this thing online, including what it sold for, but I can't imagine it was cheap. They didn't sell very well, so they're pretty hard to find these days. And thank you to the very kind Action Retro viewer who donated this to me at a VCF show. So what I wanna to do today is, well, take this thing apart real quick and see what's actually inside of it. And then we're gonna hook this up to a period correct Macintosh and hopefully give it a whirl. Now you might recognize the name Super Mac here. This branding was actually used for quite a lot of things, including monitors and actually a line of Macintosh clones from later in the 90s that I actually own a couple and am sort of obsessed with. We have our big chunky Centronics SCSI connector, but we also have an Apple video connector, VGA and composite. And the way this thing works is that well, we can output all sorts of resolutions for all different Apple monitors and regular VGA stuff, but there are also composite video modes for PAL and NTSC. And how hilarious would it be if we could get three external monitors duplicating the same image? But let's see if we can just uh, pop this thing open without cracking the plastic and see what makes it tick. Yeah, that was a lot easier than I expected. And if we take a look in here, we can see the heart of it is actually right here. This is a Texas Instruments TMS 34010. According to computer.org, this is the world's first programmable graphics processor chip. And apparently it was used in a lot of video game and arcade stuff like Mortal Kombat, and here it is inside of this super weird SCSI GPU. Now, I'd like to see if I can replace this fan because when I powered this thing up for the first time, this is extremely noisy and annoying. And as is a surprise to no one, I've got a nice Noctua that can go in here. Now, as far as what machine to use this with, well, they were marketed towards old power books, which important business people needed to do important business presentations, but these had no video out and only SCSI. This would pair up quite nicely with an SE30. Just <laughs> look at that adorable hat. The SE30, of course, does not have built-in video out. Instead, again, only SCSI, but they did make video cards and actually a lot of expansions that fit into the SE30, which means technically we could have, I guess, a triple monitor setup. But I have an even better, more hilarious idea. This glorious monstrosity is what we call the Cursed Mac. It started life as a super hacked up Mac SE30, and since I found it over the course of several years, we've put every possible upgrade 
into this machine. It has an optical drive, every possible expansion slot filled. It has ethernet. It has a 68040 processor upgrade. And this big purple card here, this is the Bolmac Grayscale video card. So this thing actually has internal grayscale video. But what that means is we don't actually have a way to connect a second monitor to this thing, which I think makes it the perfect candidate for this lovely little hat. And conveniently, the drivers for the Superview are up on the Macintosh garden, and I was able to install them with seemingly no problem at all. So, oh my God, look at this battle station. We have our clear SE30, well, SE40, with the Super Mac as a nice hat on top of it, an ISO LCD monitor that's like the exact right height and the perfect black to match the next ADB keyboard and next mouse. <laughs> okay, so the monitor is on. It's connected to VGA on the Super View, which I will turn on now. And now let's power up the system. All right, asking me to choose the display connected. I'm just gonna say VGA to start. Oh my God. Look at this. <laughs> uh, let's go into the monitor control panel here. Oh, I'm already seeing some graphical glitches. Uh, that was weird. Just going to drag this over here to match the layout. <laughs> Just like you would on a modern computer. That is pretty wild. Let's do a quick restart. And I can't complain too much about weird graphical glitches because this thing is running just an obnoxious number of upgrades and accelerators and like one-off stuff. All right, let's see. Yeah, it didn't save the orientation. Uh, let me try again. Okay, so I switched this to SVGA and now it is respecting my uh, layout of screens here. <laughs> Look at that. It's just like a modern system. I'm dragging the mouse between the two screens and it's so much more screen real estate, so much more room for activities. Let's open up the iCab web browser. Here it is in grayscale. Let's move it over to SVGA in color. Just look at that. Look at the difference. And what this screen is pretty responsive, honestly. I mean, you can see the redraw, but like the animation of the frog is not impacted at all. This is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, if I was like writing code or something for classic Macintosh, this would be a totally reasonable setup. I can have my code editor up here nice and in color and big, and I could test my stuff on both the black and white Mac and the color screen. And really, this screen for running over SCSI with video seems totally fine. All right, launching my favorite game of all time, Wolfenstein 3D, which gives us the option to drag this window onto a monitor to pick which one I want to play the game on. Let's see how it performs in grayscale first. Runs pretty well for such a relatively slow machine. <laughs> Redraw is a bit more noticeable here. All right, we have the red loading line, but none of the other graphics. Uh, <laughs> the game is playing in the background, but it's not visible. Since I already made a 65 scribe reference, I guess we have to play Marathon. All right, Marathon cramming itself into the internal display here. And I have never been any good at Marathon. God, trying to play a 3D game on here is just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, there's no way to get to settings. So I guess we'll just try something else. All right, well, I guess let's see how far we can push this thing. 
if we go into the monitors control panel, we have a ton of options. Right now it's in SVGA 800 by 600, 60 Hertz. We have 72 Hertz. The Supermax 16 inch Trinitron 832 by 624. I wish I had one of those things. But look, this goes all the way up to 1024 by 768. <laughs> And then I think we need to restart. Uh, well, apparently we have error number two from SG init. Please notify Supermac. Yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll call them right up. All right, well, I think you know where this is going. Yeah. Oh my God. Of course, these two are just mirroring one another, but <laughs> it's, it's just, this is ridiculous. Oh my God. All right, well, I've hooked up this TV with composite input. <laughs> Let's see what happens when we turn it on. Eh, well, it's getting some kind of an image, but it is distorted. Let's go into monitors here. Uh, I think it froze. <laughs> All right, a quick restart. And uh, yeah, I do rather like the vaporwave pattern this is making. I guess it's trying to send a VGA signal through composite and this is what the TV can make of it. Yeah, I can kind of see the S for Super Mac in there. That's weird. I wonder if there's any CRT that could actually display this signal over composite. Hey, look at that. It's on TV. Oh man, now that is hilarious. Uh, unfortunately, the other monitors don't like this video mode that much. The VGA LCD is displaying something, some part of it, but uh, the Apple CRT does not like this at all. Oh yeah, <laughs> that cannot be good for it. Unfortunately, don't think there's a way to get all three screens to display the same thing at the same time. Close, but not quite. Still, <laughs> I think that this monstrosity of a battle station is absolutely hilarious. Now, I'm aware that what I've done here is not only ridiculous, but in many ways, an affront to the classic Macintosh itself and everything that we hold dear. But I don't care because this is epic and I think I'm gonna bring all of this to VCF East, which is, well, if you're watching this on Saturday when this video comes out, it'll be going on right now. So if you're anywhere near Wall, New Jersey, come on down to VCF East and, <laughs> see whatever this is that I've done here today. But in any event, if you enjoyed whatever it is I've done here today, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Graham, Drew Hamlin, James Laurie, George Rosansky, Jesse Azell, Matthew Crowell, April White, James Fryman, Andrew Nicholson, Scott Cedarbaum, Frodo Jedi, Lyle Truid, Unknown Soldier 41, Tom Woodfin, Alex Hoffman, Veronica Explains, Paul Spencer, Control Alt Reese, Ryan, Chris Biggs, Jason Papaz, Scott Thompson, Camel Rakowski, Chris Nelson, Greg from Rock K Mods, Chris Calderon, and Gaspar Heller, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.